Most of the time, we need data storage when developing an Android app. There are many methods for storing data. In this video tutorial we will learn how to store data using shared preferences. Let's create an empty project. Specify the project name and start the installation. First, let's set the Gradle settings of the project. Add and sync Android app extensions in Gradle app section. Run the program and test it. While developing an Android app, you should make sure that the emulator phone is running. Let's start the design of our data storage project. By pressing the Show System UI button, we can see how the project will look on the phone. Set this before starting the design so that there are no problems later when designing. We will use plain text to get the username data entry from the user. Delete the text part and use the hint part for ease of use. I have taught the design details in detail in other videos of the playlist. Specify ID to access plain text. We will use it while writing code. Add two buttons. The first button is our save button. Set the text of the button. We will use the button's on-click property while writing code. So set the on-click name. Our second button is the delete button. We will do the same for this button. Set the text of the second button. Specify a name for the on-click property. Let's use a text view to see the data entry in the application. Set the text view size and change its text. You can adjust the size and other properties of the text what you want. Don't forget to click the Infer Constraints button after you finish the design. The design is complete. Now let's start writing code. First, let's make an application without data storage. Create a function for our save button. Import the view property. Complete the function by checking the on-click name of the save button. Sync the username we get from the user to a variable in the function using the ID of the plain text. To access the text in text view, check the text view ID and create a new string using the data we received from the user. Create a function for the delete button and check the name when clicked. Write a simple code that will delete the text when you click the delete button. Run the program and test the application. Make a data entry and press the save button. The information text is created according to the text we entered. Now let's test if the delete button works. Let's save the data entry again and close the program. Let's open the program again and test whether the data exists even if the program is closed. As you can see the data has been deleted. This is a problem. Because most of the time we don't want the data to be deleted when designing an Android application. Let's try to save the data using the shared preferences method. Let's create a shared preferences variable that we will initialize later. Create a variable named username. We will use this variable to save data. Create a toast message to repeat what we learned in the previous lesson. Create a shared preferences save function. We will use our package name as the data saving address. Set it to private. Let's specify that our variable is shared preferences and create a keyword. We will save the data using this keyword. If our variable is not null, we will print a new text using this variable when the program starts. As I said before, the codes we write in the onCreate function run as soon as when the application starts. Let's create a toast message to remind user that there is no data entry when the save button is pressed without data entry in the function of our save button. If the user enters data, let's save this data using the keyword.
The reason we want save this data is that even if the program is closed, we want to see this data when it is opened again. When the delete button is clicked, delete the data using the keyword. Let's print the text to be empty and clear the shared preferences data. Run the program and check. As you can see, when I pressed the save button without entering any data, it gave a toast message. Enter data and click the save button. Test the delete button. Save the data again. Let's close the app and open it again. As you can see, the text is not deleted because the data is saved even if the application is closed. In this video, we learned how to do a simple data storage process. But you will seldom use this method of saving data when creating the app. This is because we have to create a separate variable for each data. This doesn't make sense. Instead, we will often use SQL or other cloud data saving methods. We will learn all this information in the following videos. If you have any questions let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our other social media accounts to support programming tutorial videos.